Next up, we have Matt Arbsfeld, another intern at Meteor. Hey guys, uh, I'm the engineering intern at Meteor, and I'm a rising junior at MIT. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, interesting stuff we're working on for the Meteor build tool and making development faster. So one of the things I really like about Meteor is the auto-update functionality, where if I change a file in my Meteor project, uh, Meteor recognizes the file change and automatically rebuilds my app and then refreshes the client while preserving the application state. So this allows me to iterate quickly. So let's take a look at how that looks in an app. Um, so here's, here's a version of Microscope that I call big. So um, a lot of big apps take a while to bundle and serve data to the user. So let's, let's load our app. So you see, it takes some time to load the data. And now if we change a CSS file, for example, let's make this a nice, subtle blue. Uh, it'll take some time to bundle the app, restart the server. Um, and people who are making big apps, like I talked to someone who's giving a talk later, could take 30, 40 seconds for this process to happen. And if all I'm changing is CSS, I want to see the instant updates. So let's look at the newest version of Meteor that is in the pipeline right now. Uh, we'll pull up another terminal browser, and we'll run the same project. And now let's load it in a different tab. So on the top is the newest version of Meteor, state of the art, and the bottom is the old version. Now let's change this to be, say, red. And you see the top changes basically instantly, the bottom still has to update. So if I'm tr doing something really hard in CSS, like centering a div, something that'll take me as like inexperienced CSS person forever, like this is going to give me instant feedback. Um, and it, this isn't just for CSS. This is for any client-side asset. So here's a template. And say I, I want to add like HTTP to the beginning of this domain. Um, since on the top, I don't have to restart my server because it's just client side. It's a lot faster. Um, and that you can see that on the bottom, I have to restart my server. And that's the old, the old way of doing things. The new way, we don't have to restart the server. Uh, so yeah, it should, be, it should be allow you guys to develop faster. And it will be great. Um, this will also form kind of the, the backbone of how we do incremental loading in the future and not loading all the templates on initial load. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, so it's dependent on 090, so around either with packaging or soon after packaging. Yeah. Is the gist of it that it basically knows if you make like a front end edit that it knows that that's different than changing like your, your application? Exactly. So in the past, we uh, just, oh, sorry. So, uh, the audience member asked, how does, it, how does it work? Does it notice that we made a change to certain files? And the answer is yes. Before, we just noticed a file changed. Let's just do everything. Now we have much finer grained um, knowledge of the files. We know if it's a CSS file. We know if it's a client side file. And we can act accordingly. Yep. Um, I guess I was just playing CSS. I didn't really see. But are you going to support stylus, SAS, less? Yeah, like it, it works now. So if we had a, a less file, it would compile the less file and serve the, 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 the new CSS. Oh, the, sorry, the question was, will it work with preprocessor CSS formats? And the answer is yes. And it, it, it works now. Is the um, end result of the incremental file bit for bit identical to as if you've done it all in one shot? So that is. The goal of this is to have not see any difference from how the old system worked, just be faster. So that means uh, if it's new CSS, it will load the CSS as if it loaded the new file. Um, so it should work. It should work the same as before, but faster. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys.